I'm going to calculate the complex Fourier series for the function whose basic unit is the exponential e to the power t between negative pi and pi and then which repeats with period 2 pi. I've drawn a picture of the graph of that function here and also written down the piecewise rule for f of t. Let's start by writing down the expression for the Fourier coefficients cn. Remember that for a complex Fourier series that involves 1 over the period, not 2 over the period. So that's 1 over 2 pi. Then we integrate over the whole period from negative pi to pi and include the function here e to the power t and the exponential e to the negative jnt where remember j squared is negative 1. Although it's not always strictly speaking necessary it's traditional to calculate c0 separately. So let's put n equals 0 here and calculate c0. With n equals 0 the second exponential, the one with j in, is now e to the power 0, which is 1. So that gives us a very simple integral to do. The integrand is just e to the t, and so when we do the integration we'll get e to the t again. It's just a matter of putting in the top and bottom limits. But now look at that combination of exponentials, especially with the half at the front. That should be a form that you recognize. It's actually just the shine, the hyperbolic sign, of pi. The only extra factor is the 1 over pi. When we're doing complex Fourier series we quite often get hyperbolic or trigonometric functions in our answer. I've just written down here the formula for shine of x to remind you. OK, let's now move on and do the Cn in general. It's the same formula we had above, but I've done a little bit of preparation here. I've included what was originally two exponentials, e to the t and e to the minus jnt, into a single exponential using the rules of powers. I've also factorized out the t there in that power. Written this way, we see that the integrand is just a plain exponential with a constant factor on the t. So we can integrate it in this usual way for a normal simple exponential. The only hassle is that the coefficient is now complex. Let's get on with it. The answer is the original exponential divided by the constant coefficient of t. Then we have to put in the integration limits. Before doing that however I've broken that exponential up again into its original parts e to the t, e to the minus jnt. Let's now put in the integration limits. That's straightforward enough. And now what do we see here? e to the jn pi and its complex conjugate, e to the negative jn pi. But do you remember e to the j theta is just cis theta. So e to the jn pi must be cis n pi. And similarly for e to the minus jn pi. I've written that here for e to the jn pi and expanded the cis as cos plus j sine. But then do you remember sine of any whole number of pi's is zero. So that leaves cos of n pi. But if n is whole number cos of n pi is negative one to the power n. So that's a significant simplification. Now what about e to the minus jn pi? Well we could go through the same discussion of cis but e to the minus jn pi is just the complex conjugate of e to the jn pi. The complex conjugate of any real number is the same real number so the answer must just be minus 1 to the power n again. So let's now put those complex exponentials back into our expression for the integral. Since both of them were negative 1 to the power n, that means negative 1 to the power n will be a factor at the front. That just leaves e to the pi minus e to the minus pi. But that reminds us pretty much of what we did when we calculated c0. It's shine pi again, isn't it, because there's also a half at the front. So we've once again got shine pi over pi, and then we've still got that complex piece underneath, 1 minus jn, and we've got the power of negative 1. 
when there's a complex number underneath, we normally multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of that complex number in order to make the denominator real. Here the conjugate would be 1 plus Jn. So let's do that. Here's the first step. And then we multiply out the brackets in the denominator to get 1 plus n squared. That's my final preferred expression for Cn. The Fourier series though contains also C negative n. C negative n is the complex conjugate of Cn. Alternatively, it could be obtained by simply changing n to negative n everywhere. The effect is the same. The only thing that might be in doubt is the power of negative 1. But negative 1 to the power negative n is the reciprocal of negative 1 to the n. Since they're either positive 1 or negative 1, that means those two things must be the same. So now we can write down c negative n as well. It just remains to put all this together to construct the Fourier series, the complex Fourier series for f of t. There are a couple of different ways you might want to do that. One way is to have just a sum from n equals 1 to infinity and include the cn and the c minus n terms. In that case though, the term with n equals 0 is missed out. So you have to include that as extra at the front. An alternative and more compact way of doing it is to just run the sum from negative infinity to positive infinity and have only the cn term in. Doing that allows the n to take all the values both positive and negative and incidentally also includes the c0. So I'll now finish by using this version and putting in the actual form for the cn. Where possible we usually bring coefficients that don't contain n out to the front of the sum. I've done that here with the shine pi over pi. Before stopping I'll just quickly write down the real Fourier coefficients a n and b n which I can get very easily from the c n and c negative n. The a n is the sum of c n and c negative n and since c negative n is the complex conjugate of c n that means that the a is twice the real part of c n. It's easy to write down the answer. What about the b? Well the b is j times the difference of c n and c negative n which turns out to be negative 2 times the imaginary part of c n. That's also easy to write down now. That's where I want to stop.